Hello, this is Mr. Bamu Idano Grenier. Let me I just want to show you another video on how you can produce a simple applet in GeoGebra for teaching your children mathematics. Okay, let's take for example I want to do I want to teach quadratic equation and all I just want to show my children is just to demonstrate how the equation looks like, the relationship between A, B and C in the general quadratic equation. I know this is a quadratic equation so I need this graph view so there's no need hiding the views. So I need the axis and the graph view because I need to demonstrate those various constants and the relationship between X and Y using the views. So one beauty about GeoGebra is this as I come to my algebra view here just type the equation you want let's assume my quadratic equation is x square you can see the keyboard there just say x square see it will start plotting it for you and so x square let's say plus 2x and let's say minus 6 as you click on your enter it's already there then tap this graph so it has plotted for you so this is the equation and you can see the name of the equation there I mean, so you can see the name of the equation is f of x so that is that okay so that is the bet with this one I did now this I can't make this one dynamic in this way because you know when you want to explain this to your children you want to demonstrate the minimum value, the maximum value, you want them to know how quadratic equation works so that they will understand it, especially the those one that says that uncle, how do you know that this is the minimum, this is the maximum? So how do you know your roots? You understand? So because of that now you need to learn how to do slider. So let me just show you how you can do slider, how you can define values just like that. So let me delete this. So to start, let me start with slider. You get your slider, just click on your slider, click anywhere on the screen. So the name of the slider is A and that is what I just want. I want to define A in my quadratic equation. It's telling you to put minimum or maximum value. I know this is quadratic equation, we don't need anything angle here. Yeah? If it's something like rotation and the rest or linear transformation, you are rotating an object, I can use angle slider the integer for other aspects just like that you can do animation and like that ok let's take a, a minimum value of minus 5 a maximum value of ok let me just say 10 for example then how do you want it to increase do you want it to increase by 1 okay, let me say 1 you can make it to increase by any form maybe 0 0.1 0 0.2 but let me just keep it by one since it's constant a and b i don't want a decimal increment i don't want a decimal value so okay so that is point a you can see it. it's been labeled here if you don't want the slider to show in the screen you come here and remove it it will appear back okay so let me put the next slider b so you can see b is the name is already there let's say b also move to 10 and since I don't want a decimal, I need a whole number increment. So that is that. Then the last one is C. So let's say C also. I want the maximum to be 10 and I want it to be increasing by 1. Okay. So let's test our sliders. See, as you keep moving the slider, it will be moving according to the increment you set it. So I've set it as increment by one so since i don't want decimal so i don't need to i don't need it to increase by positive one or by decimal number so i don't need minus two point anything so this is increasing by whole number the same thing with this okay the same thing with this all right so this let me set everything to zero let me set everything to zero and set everything to zero all right then you can position your slider you can see the slider did not move as i click the screen i'm moving it because it's been pinned to the screen you see it's pinned to the screen and it, if i lock it that means i can't move it from here but i don't think it's not locked 
I can click and move it so I didn't lock it but if I lock it now that means I don't want it to leave you see I can't move it I can only be sliding it here I can't move it but I don't want to lock it yet since um, I've not positioned it where I want it to be on the screen so let me just put them in this corner A B then C okay now let's type our quadratic equation so just type a general form of quadratic equation but before I do that okay let me type it first then I'll put it on the screen so that is saying uh, just type your ax put your power to a square then let's use plus plus uh, bx see everything is coming as zero because we have set all my slider to be zero so a is zero b is zero so you see it won't give you any graph because everything is zero 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 then plus c then enter so this is my quadratic function f of s is a s squared plus b s plus c and all the constant are zeros so that's why you won't see any graph there but you can see the function is zero you can see the f function you can see the label here is showing you that every everything is on zero now this is the demonstration point a let's assume my quadratic equation a is two so just click on the slider a then move it with your keyboard so you can see that as a is changing you can see how the graph is changing so the children can watch that when a is zero you can see how it will be when a is negative remember when a is negative it will give you a maximum value graph so you can see that it's maximum value so let me go to positive a let's say a is true and you can see the graph the equation have changed a is now 2x squared okay then let's look at b let's assume b is a negative value see as i move b see b is coming down now see as b keeps changing you see the graph is coming down if b is positive you see it will be going to positive direction with this your children can watch and see how it's changed so let's take b to be let's say let me use a negative value let's say b is a, let's say minus three then let's take c you can see how c is moving so c is the y intercept you can see when c is one it meets the graph at this point so when c is two you can see that this quadratic that does not have roots because the c intercept because the minimum value is not touching any of this point so there's no result for that so let me move it to negative c since we have been negative c you can see it's changing down so that is that Okay, let me leave it at minus 5 okay so this is it so this is your quadratic using your um, scale to do that using your sliders to test it so with this you can change it children can watch and that is that you can also do other things checking the root you see this is the root it will tell you to select root this is the root this is the maximum value for if i click on this so this is the root of my quadratic equation you can see then if i need the maximum or minimum value which is this if i click on this so this is the minimum value that is the extremum just like that so if you need gradient at a particular point gradient should be here hmm before you can do gradient that is the slope now you need to get a point you need to get a point gradient at a particular point when you click on the graph this point can move see you can get a gradient at this point all you just need to do click on this slope see select the line oh then before i can do gradient i need tangent sorry let me get tangent 
so as i click on tangent telling me to select point then the circle or the conics so i need tangent on this point on this line see then it is that place i can now get my gradient which is my slope the slope of this line so that is that so you can be moving this one you can move it you can move it gently with your keyboard and see the value of the gradient and all these various values you can so when the gradient is zero see you can move it gently see at minimum value you can see gradient is zero so that is why when you are teaching them differentiation you can teach them maximum and minimum value so they will see it that at minimum value gradient is zero so this demonstration they are very important for your children just like that then if you want to bring in anything on the screen here yeah, all you need to do get your test for example let's say i want to bring out the root of my equation which is a and b come to your text place it on where you want it to be on the keyboard just say roots just say roots equals to then go to your advance go to GeoGebra. remember the root is labeled as a and b you can check it here you see root is a root is b so a and b are the root so just click on a then type and click on b so that is all the root will appear on the screen so these are the roots of your quadratic equation if you want it to be bigger click on it come here select the size let's take medium if you want it to be bold it's done if you want to put other colors maybe blue color just like that okay want it to be Italy italized but I don't want that so that is it so these are your root gradient as the point moves so you can do so many demonstrations to your children just like that you see this is a positive gradient because the line is facing this direction then immediately you turn to this side you are having a negative gradient to see it so there are so many things you can teach your children the equation of a circle coordinate geometry so many things you can do with this software let your children view it they should view mathematics and it will look easy for them to understand so this is a simple applet then you can close the graphics view and close it you have only this so I've done an applet. So this is an applet showing me the root of my quadratic equation. If I don't want this D again, just click on it or you right click, you delete it. I don't want it. So this is the minimum value. If I want the minimum value to appear on the screen, the same thing I can go to my text. Remember minimum value is labeled as C click here type minimum minimum value is equals to so that is point c go to the advanced click on c okay so see the minimum value so minimum value of x is this why the maximum value is this then cancel you must go to move before you do another operation so if you want it to be large you come here change the size you want the color to change just like that if you want the graph the graph is red if i want to change the color of my graph i can use black mm -hmm. click on you must click on it first either you right click you can right click go to setting or you just click it come to this uh, icon here do whatever you want if you want the graph to be hidden lines see click on it first if you want it to be this so depend on what you want to teach your children GeoGebra can do it for you very well 
you can do setting of the imagine let's say the graph you don't want this color you want the color of the graph to change you can come to you just right click on the screen click on graphics you can do your settings see color click on the color let's say I want my graph to be red okay this is for the axis the axis is red okay that is line is line I have here that is as as a setting I'm doing so I want it to be black let's leave it in that black okay is it this is the line for the arrowhead okay this one is okay let's assume we want it to be bold okay, so the line is thick you can do some setting here if you don't want to show it you click on it it disappears okay. then let's see if there's any other thing we can do okay let's see what this bold is so this one is for the words the scale now that is the bold of the scale so you can make the scale to be bold okay that is that you can do some other things let me see okay, okay let's this is on basic i'm working on that's why i'm not seeing some things let's go to x axis okay if i want only the positive direction of x to show just click it see, only positive direction is showing this one is good for when you are plotting a graph without negative values you can do all this setting then you can put your units you can label your axis let's say i want to put x axis you can label it x axis x axis it will appear there you see it's already showing here okay then what other thing again i think that is that okay then y axis the same thing you can label it y as is okay so you see it's showing y as is then the grid now if i want to change the color of the grid so this is where i will come to so this is my color of my grid I can use red since most of our graph in schools red is the color i can bold it if i want see if i don't want to bold it remove it but the color is red just like that so you do the setting you want you can change the color lines see you can bold it but i don't want this line i want this just like that so i think this is okay that's so depend on your target what you want do your setting the way you want it and you are good to go then let's say this uh, where's that is the scale you want it to be bigger than this i think we can do that setting under here yeah. I think it's here we can do that yes font size yes you can see the font size is changed now let me make it bigger let's see 24 hmm. so to so the setting for the scale you can even this words have even increased so that is that do your setting the way you want it the way it will come out clear for your children to understand x axis y axis then you can also change your scale if you don't want it to be one unit scale you can come to this place put your mouse here you see this is not two unit scale for y as is see this is five unit scale hmm. you can enlarge this see, see why sometimes it's good you can lock the objects so that you can move all these ones to where you want to place it let me place it here see the importance of locking object on screen see now i've changed my scale to let me move this okay i've changed my scale to five unit scale see the graph is more better like this than the other one okay. so this can just be your applet then do your demonstration to your children when b change you can see how the graph is moving they can monitor it they can understand it when c changes see they can monitor it see the root is also changing at this point there is no root because the graph have minimum value is not touching the x axis
can explain this to your children so we now have our roots see see now my root in this quadratic graph now is uh, this oh i've not put the quadratic graph. assuming my children want to see the graph i am even plotted let me put it here. just come here then come to advanced come to this so the quadratic is labeled as f is f of x so it's f okay so this is the quadratic we just plotted so this is the quadratic equation that i just plotted let me edit it let me say y equals to y equals to that okay and it's better like this then change the size just click on it come here let's use a medium also okay so this is the quadratic you can change the color as we said the other time let me change the color to blue you can know this is the background let me leave the background as white more colors let's leave the background as white okay <laughs> better like this okay that blue does not look good all right so that is that's as you so c is zero that's why c is not showing on your graph so when c changes position to one you can see so this is the quadratic graph that gave this then this is the graph name f so remember when you were bringing it here this one i don't want this name to show click here click here then hide it hidden so this is that so this is an applet this is the quadratic you just plot it you can place it anywhere you want your children to view it easily you can move this for them to see you can move this see this is not a straight line graph you can see because a is zero so this is a linear graph you can see that it's both string in this case the root now there's no value for y so the answer is uh, 0 0.2 that means when you solve this equation y equals to the when you solve this you can see that x is 0 0.2 when y is 0 so you can also use it to teach linear graph it's a good way also so in this case i can maintain a to be 0 just be moving this one my linear graph will be changing you see so you can use it to teach linear graph also you can use it to teach gradient so many things you can do you can move your c so you see you can move your c just like that but since it's quadratic we are teaching we need to place our value for a so when a is negative see we are getting a maximum value graph you can see it hmm. so you see when a is negative so this is your maximum value graph so the maximum value c is 3 for x then 8 for y so this is that quadratic equation applet using GeoGebra you are the teacher you know your objective you know what you want to achieve in your class so prepare your applet if you can't do it maybe you don't know how to set the applet the way you want it then go to the site Go to your browser, type quadratic equation, you will see so many activities, just like what I showed you in my previous videos. You see so many activities, then search for the one that suits your class and you are good to go. Go to your classroom, demonstrate this thing to your children, most especially the concept. These children need to understand this concept so that math will be easy for them and interest will be there. They should not see math as a, an abstract thing that they will just be cramming. They should, be, they should see it as a picture as a video as an as a video in a visual uh, way like this so that it will look interesting to them they can even do it in their own, with their own system at home play with maths like this then the understanding will come out then when you now solve this quadratic equation using any of the method completing the square factorization they will easily get it you can explain you can even import uh, images you can bring in your image here show them that this is how you rise you fall this is your ground so many things you can do <laughs> just like that you can even put a point let me just do this and we end this video here you can put a point here 
I want the label of this point to show. Let me label. Just click on it. Come here. Come here. I want the name of this one to show. It's the only name I want. So that is point G. You can see it. So my point G. You can move it. Just click on it. Animate. See the play button here. Stop it. So you stop it. So D is a uh, moving. Let me don't do this you can, see. you can animate it see D is moving you can even uh, put a trace you can put a trace so see as I move D as I'm moving D you see D is making a trace on that point so you are the teacher you know what you want to achieve you know your objective there are so many things algebra can actually do for you so D is moving and you see the part of D is tracing that blue part there. All these are the things you do. For example, I'm teaching a, a integration and I want to do, let's say, area under a curve. So if I'm doing area under a curve, so I need the area under the curve. This point, now, for example, let's say area under a curve of a, this place from D equals to 1. See to d equals to 4. Let's say these two places here. If I slide the screen, the trace will disappear. But I need d to slide from here. Now you can do area under a curve from this place. D here. Very simple. You can do that one. And if I want to do that, all I need to do is I can just come back and open. Just uh, click here. Open your algebra. Hmm. That is it. Then type your integrate. See, it's telling you to integrate between between function where to where. The function is f. You start from where. Function f. Okay, not this one. Is this one I need? I integrate. So this one is between two functions that's why it's giving me uh, between function this and function B. but this is just single function I can do it here the function is F start from okay, let me click this the function is F I should start from X is uh, the other place I have X is 1 start from 1 then end at 4 that is all then close this one back okay let me close it okay so see you can see it. so this area under a curve and you see the answer the area is 21 from D this place from 1 down to this place 4 can see it so so many things you can do with GeoGebra. Very interesting software. And you can see the area. If this area is not thick enough, you just click on it, come here, increase the thickness of the area. Okay, this is the line thickness of the line. I want the thickness of the area. So we displace and we use. See, I want the color to be blue, or let's say green. Hmm. So that is it. So the area under this curve, see, the answer is 21 square units. So this is the area from 1 to 4. So that is one beauty of Jojo Brand. So I think you, I hope you enjoyed this video, and this is all I have for us in this video. So do have a nice day. Take care.